certain percentage of their income in taxes. Today, that rate is 5.95% of what you earn, no matter how big your paycheck is. This fall, Massachusetts voters will be given a chance to change the Constitution, creating a higher percentage of tax for bigger paychecks, a lower percentage for smaller ones. Here's how supporters say it would work. A single person with taxable income of less than $50,200 or a couple under $81,000 would pay 5.5% in taxes. That's less than today. But a single person's additional income up to $90,000 or a couple's additional income up to $150,000 would be taxed at 8.8%. That's more than today. And for people earning above those levels, the tax rate would be higher still, 9.8%. It's called a graduated income tax. Most states and the federal government do it already. In the next few months, Massachusetts voters will be deluged with advertisements aimed at getting them to vote to join that crowd or to vote not to. To help frame your thoughts, we've invited four people key to the upcoming debate to join us. James Browdy is director of the Tax Equity Alliance of Massachusetts, the group that helped put the proposed constitutional amendment on the ballot. Barbara Anderson is director of Citizens for Limited Taxation, which is fighting to stop the amendment. Peter Foreman is the Republican leader in the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Mark Roosevelt is a Democratic representative and a candidate for governor. Jim, let's start with you. What's the premise behind the whole concept and behind all the numbers? The taxation should be based on ability to pay, and it's not in Massachusetts. The lowest fifth of the population pay twice as much of their income to all state and local taxes as millionaires do. Middle income people one and a half times as much. And Mike, you adequately summarized part of the proposal. Well, it is true we want to eliminate the provision in the Constitution that says that low and middle income people pay at the same rate as millionaires. That's unfair. But when you talk about tax rates, you left the other half out. What we also do in this proposal, not just according to supporters, but according to people like Bill Weld, who opposes the question, is double things like the child care credit. Provide $53 million in water and property tax relief to low and middle income people. Reward long-term investment in Massachusetts job-creating businesses. So it's a reform of the whole income tax system that's not just good for people's pocketbooks, for 92% of the people specifically whose taxes will go down, but we believe very good for the economy as well. 92% of the taxes go down, of the people's taxes go again, down, 8% go up. According to the Department of Revenue, which means it's a revenue-neutral proposal, it doesn't, won't result in one single penny being taken out of public services. Beyond, uh, so the taxes stay exactly in quantity as they are now, just shifting the burden a little bit more towards right. people who earn more. 92% of the people see them go down, 8% up, and when you combine the rates you talked about with the deductions and exemptions I talked about, what Bill Weld says is if you're a couple making less than 102000 bucks, your taxes will go down. If you're a single parent making less than 81000 your taxes go down. And if you're a single person without kids making less than 60000 your taxes go down. That's a pretty good deal. So, Barbara Anderson, here we have a proposal that says 92% of the people pay less taxes. So why are you against it? You're for less taxes. That's right. You do have to wonder why an organization like Citizens for Limited Taxation is opposed to this giant tax cut, and an organization like Jim Brody's team, which is made up of the public employee unions and the welfare lobbyists, are for it. And the reason for that is none of that is real. All of those statistics, all of those tax cuts, all of those tax breaks are tricks to get people to vote to change the Constitution. What you showed on the Trick screen... Trick known as a law. Excuse me. A law please, while I speak, all of the things that people saw on the screen are the statute, the law that's going to be on the ballot separate from the constitutional amendment. The constitutional amendment just says one thing. And it what, says, what's the significance of the difference? The a statute can be changed by the legislature, which I'm sure Peter will, will be talking about, but the constitutional amendment is permanent, it's forever, and all it says is that people who make more will pay more, people who work harder, who work two jobs, who work overtime, who, have, who are pushed into a higher tax bracket with inflation will pay at a higher rate. And the legislature, the legislature, will set the number and range of brackets, picking us off one bracket at a time for the rest of our natural lives. So what you're afraid of is this will get used to raise taxes in I a way it that will. it couldn't I know it will be because when the people who are promoting it are the public employee unions and the welfare lobbyists, all they want is more money. I mean, obviously, and I understand that, but this is a way to try to trick people into voting themselves tax increases every time Jim and his people want more money, which is always... Peter Foreman, you're nodding your head. Well, it, it's a massive lie. It's a bait-and-switch type of game. You have the public employee union saying, we're going to offer you tax cuts, but it's the legislature that has to do it. And I can tell you from having fought for tax cuts in the legislature, the legislature won't approve these tax cuts. In fact, some of them... They don't have to, Peter. You should understand. They don't have to. Oh, if people oh yes, vote, because the legislature can change them. If people Jim, vote in November... Did, wait a minute, Jim. When we did the budget debate... debating the case. When, no, I, I was giving your group in the legislature plenty of opportunity to build credibility. During the budget debate last month, I offered many of those tax cuts, 
they rejected Peter, me. how would you pay for your tax cuts? How well, would you pay for a simple some question? Them, some of them like were very... public services. No, we right. listen, some Peter, of them we won't take a small. penny out of cops, firefighters, some or schools. All right, Jim, Jim and Peter, I'm jumping in here because we're, uh, we're digressing. We're digressing. Peter Foreman, let's go back to this. We have a bunch of numbers that are part of a proposed statute that will also, I guess, be before voters this fall. If those numbers are passed by voters, why are you so sure the legislature won't stick to them? That will be a law, it will be in effect. Because I've been in that legislature uh, for 14 years, four of them as Republican floor leader, fighting against budget increases, fighting for tax cuts, and it is the Democratic majority every single time that blocks these. And you're saying the legislature will disregard the will of the voters and not follow those numbers that we in put on the screen? In a without any thought. Mark Roosevelt, what do you think? You're running for governor, you're a Democrat, you it's, believe the legislature will ignore the voters? It's an interesting thing. The legislature is not whom we have to trust here. I'm running for governor, and I'll tell you right now, I would veto any use of the graduate income tax to raise taxes. That's not what this is about, and I think both Barbara and Peter know it. Notice they won't criticize the proposal. They said absolutely nothing against the proposal. Why? Because the proposal makes sense. It's a middle-income tax cut. Let him finish. Let him finish. we got time. 35, 42 states have, have income taxes. 35 of them use the graduated rate. Do we see the same problems there? They have the same kind of legislatures? Look, I know, beating on the legislature is easy. The fact of the matter is, the people who want to keep this proposal from being enacted are the people who are going to pay higher taxes, the 8%. The 92% of the citizens of Massachusetts who would pay less taxes deserve our voice now. And we shouldn't be beating back because some people are going to use scare tactics against Why didn't you vote for those tax cuts for those low-income people when Peter gave you a chance to? Look, I'm not for tax cuts. I'll say that right now. I'm for a revenue-neutral proposal that is fair to the people oh. who need government service and to those of us who provide it. My, my, and by the way, Barbara, you're suggesting that the hard-working people are going to pay more is insulting on its face to suggest that people who make 50 grand a year work less hard for their money than those who make over 100 grand a year is Nobody's just a mistake. I'm going to try, try to, to trick people into thinking we're talking um, about something Barbara, I just took what you people said. You said the hard work. As a person who works two jobs, if they work overtime, right. these people are working harder than someone who works one job or doesn't work overtime, I'm almost by definition. They're making over $100,000 a year. Under the graduated yeah. income tax? No. $20,000, and there'll be other states you mm -hmm. talk about. The rate gets higher than our 5.95 percent at $14,000, dollars not in, not in $1,000. Not in the My blood pressure is going to come out of my ears. Bill so Weld is the lead opponent of this thing. Weld's Department of Revenue said if you make less than $102,000, bucks, you are going to pay less. Now, the reality, Barbara, if they get a second or third job, and that couple makes more than $102,000, bucks, they are probably going to pay more. So be it. But they're going to help fund tax relief for the other 92% and do it, Peter, without taking a penny out of the public services that you love to say you care you. about, but are willing to cut the funds. Why is it all of the public employee unions are fighting for this? And, and we religious need organizations and illegal voters. voters. We need more money. Religious organizations are trusting and of your work. Right? But, but I've dealt with it. Let me tell you, all the public employee unions looking for more money, to pay raises, for expansion of the budget and public services. They're not looking Peter, for, for since you can't attack neutral. the message, your job for the next few let months. Let me tell you. Let me finish your thought. It's so not attack the, the messenger. It's a question of faith. Whether no, or let not me finish this this you this And the you only thought? way, Michael, the, right. only right. way the only way, the only way that the statutory changes could hold over the next four years will be when Bill Weld is elected and can veto them. Let me see if I can get you to agree on a concept, the four of you. Would you agree conceptually that it makes sense for people to pay a higher percentage of their income in taxes as they earn more. No. The concept behind graduating income. No. Forget the numbers. Because Would you agree? People already pay more. People who are earning $100,000 pay 5.95% of $100,000. They're paying roughly four times more than somebody who makes $20,000. That's about as fair as But Barbara, be. somebody who earns $10,000 or $15,000 or $20,000 is getting hit harder by things like sales tax. They're getting hit harder by the basics of life. That's when right. you make fifty dollars or sixty dollars or $70,000, do not you have more discretionary income Shouldn't you yes, pay more than taxes? Discretionary income goes into a bank account for people to borrow for their homes, for their cars. It creates jobs. Paul Fongas has said that this graduated income tax is another thunderbolt of anti-business ideology, which is the last thing this state needs. So that's another subject, which is what it does to the economy. Mm -hmm. And that's Let's talk about that. I'll say welcome to the economy. All right. So you don't agree that the graduated income tax is a good idea conceptually? No, Peter, do you, you don't agree either. No. All right. So we're just not but even that's, there. Even that's the different. important point to have made. That is the important point to have made, and that is where Barbara and Peter should wage their fight on the merits of whether a graduated income tax is fair or not. They don't think it's fair. 
I think it is. That, but that's not the way that the advocates and people like you are presenting it. Right, you're arguing it as an issue that you're going to be offering something that won't stay on the table. And you talk about hypothetically, if you were governor, you wouldn't allow any of those taxes to be taken off the table. Well, that's a, an amazing change because virtually all of the tax increases that we've had over the years since you've been in the legislature, I think all of them you have voted for, all of the proposed tax cuts, including many of those in this proposal, you have voted against. Well, actually, that's, recently, that's not true, but that's not, it's not worth debating Peter, 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 I don't want to turn this into a political, political debate. I want to keep it to the subject but of graduating from tax. Because, 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 because you are selling this on faith that the legislature will make good on a promise being made. Peter, then why don't you call me? Peter, we can do One second, please. You should close down the legislature because the reality is, as Mark just said, they can raise your taxes now, just not fairly. And if we're going to worry, if that you were going to change something as a legislator, then we should close down the building. Right. So any I'm going to throw a towel in the middle that. of the ring, and we'll uh, send everybody back to their corners and be back with you in just a minute. Does this boil down to trust? Does this boil down to either you trust the legislature or you don't, and if you don't, you can't vote for a graduated income tax? Absolutely not. As we said before, the legislature has the power and has used the power, as Peter said before, to raise people's taxes. The only new power this gives the legislature is the power to raise them or cut them when they choose to do it fairly. That's number one. Number two, it isn't public employee unions or welfare recipients or religious leaders or legislators who are going to make this decision. It's several million voters. Our new bumper sticker says, vote yourself a tax break November 8th. If the vast majority of low and middle income people, and I think many wealthy people, by the way, say yes to this proposal, there's going to be hell to pay if legislators decide to renege on this. It's just not going to happen. It's not real. Yeah, but see, the, the point is what makes it more difficult with the graduated income tax is now if they want to raise my income tax, they have to raise everybody's income tax at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you have a tax revolt. With Jim's proposal, you can raise your income taxes one year, his income tax another because year. Because you don't understand the proposal, year, Barbara. I understand it perfectly. Absolutely I understand wrong. it very well. So anytime they want to raise taxes, they pick us off one bracket at a time. We call it the bracket bracket. And that way there'll never be enough taxpayers angry enough to either get even with them at the polls or do anything to repeal the tax Making increase. it politically easier, you're saying, Much to raise easier. taxes. Yes. All right. Peter, is that what you think would happen? Absolutely. There is no question about it. You cannot trust the legislature when it comes to taxes. They will move in taxes as opposed to budget cuts every single time. I've seen it time and time again. The only reason we have not had tax increases the last three years is because of Bill Weld's veto. What if this constitutional amendment had had a proposal in it that said the legislature cannot raise taxes without voter approval in a, in a follow-up referendum? Would you feel better? Oh, I'd feel a lot better if there was a blanket constitutional statement that there could be no tax increases without voter referendum if we had a statewide two and a half. No tax increases without voter that approval. Would that, the that, that, that would solve the That would make me Mark Roosevelt, happy. what's wrong with that, conceptually? That isn't what we're discussing here today. It's not a question we're discussing of that. Trust. We're discussing no, trust. No, they're discussing, they don't trust, they're the discussing trust. You know why they're doing it? Because they don't want to discuss the proposal that's on the ballot. Why? Because the proposal makes sense for 92% of the people. Hey, it makes sense for the other 8% if but, they believe but in But Barbara basic says fairness. if we divide into three brackets, only one-third as many people compl will it's, complain Michael, when the legislature raises taxes. Tactic. And it's not All even that it is. Is. It could be You can sell something statewide and say, this isn't trust, believe us, we're going to do it. And it'll help you. Let me just say, you don't have to believe it. Michael, if I can, it's so disrespectful of the voters. The legislature, the Ways and Means Committee proposed last year dumping something called the renter's deduction, which doesn't affect the vast majority of people in the state. A couple of days after a uniform outrage from homeowners and tenants, the legislature rejected that by 151 to nothing. If the people think a tax increase is wrong, whether it affects them or not, they will say no. If they think a tax increase makes sense for the economy, for public services, they're going to do the right thing as they did when they no, rejected that, your that, proposed that was, tax no, cut in 1990. Fortunately, it's still an emotional issue with people. But when you had a, and Mark supported, a billion dollar tax increase under Michael Dukakis, Which the, the voters were protected. outraged about that, but it didn't do any good. People, they still voted for it. But How outraged least, were they if they voted to protect it, Barbara? You don't believe in democracy if the voters don't agree with hey, you. It's I not believe in democracy, simple. And that's happening. Let's, but let's this way, at least, you're going to make it so much easier because no one will ever go to the street to get the same Actually, kind of Michael, petition. I would. No one will put a repeal on the ballot because there won't be enough people. It's not just three brackets. They can do 100 brackets. They can change the bracket every $1. They can have him paying more at $20,000 than I'm paying and at $25,000. And raise taxes 000. one little snippet at a time, one group at that's a time. The answer is they cannot do that under this proposal. As you said at the beginning, everybody's income up to 50000 whether you're making a million or not, 
is taxed at the same low rate. If you raise that's the rate from true. twenty to thirty thousand, everybody. But that's a law easy. that can be changed. Of course, all the amendment says is different brackets. It doesn't, doesn't, say, it it doesn't right. say what they are. It's not even indexed for inflation in the constitutional and it, and amendment. It doesn't take long to pass a law to increase taxes. I've seen the legislature Peter, do Peter, it. Peter, is this uh, legislature? Right, Michael, I guess I Last comment. The, the, the point here is this: these are scare tactics. They don't want to talk about the proposal. Look, the United it's States government has a graduate income tax. 35 of 42 states that have income taxes have them. Do you know what happens? It's very simple. Middle-income people who are getting squeezed in this economy pay less That's than taxes. That's true. In those other that states, is people are $20,000, $25,000 paying a higher rate than we're paying right now. I've got to jump in. In the end, I think with Congress or with the state legislature, it does boil down to how the voters feel the people we elect will deal with this in the form of an amendment and then a law that implements the amendment that says what the numbers would be. It's a matter of trust. Thanks for coming in today.